How's it going guys? Today we're going to finish the topic for discontinuity. Now, let's get, uh, give you a little review of discontinuity. We started with the, the highest level of discontinuity and it divides into two topics, essential and removable. But under essential, we have two more. We have jump discontinuity and our last one, infinite discontinuity. So very similar to the previous video, I'm going to give the definition first. It says, let F be a function such that. Notice that we have four conditions now. For the job discontinuity, it was only three. But for an infinite, it's four. Now, what does this mean? For the pre for the, in the previous video, we had less than infinity. And that, that means finite, right? It means a constant. But now we're going to work with infinity. So it says, if the limit when x approaches c from the right of f of x is plus or minus infinity, which is not equal to the limit when x approaches c to the left, which is equal to f of c. So that's the first condition. Now the second one, very similar to the first one, is, is instead of approaching from the right equal to infinity, well, the left one is equal to plus or minus infinity. Now the third one, both of them are approaching infinity, and none of them are equal to f of c. But they're equal to each other. So, they're, so the limits are both approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity, okay? And then the last one is when one is approaching one, in, like positive infinity, and the other one is approaching negative infinity or vice versa, okay? And ne neither of them ha can be equal to f of c, okay? So whenever the limit is infinity, it can never equal to f of c because f of c is a constant. It's a value, right? And infinity is not a value. So it's not a real number. So whenever we are approaching a, a, a specific infinity, you cannot equal that to f of c, okay? So in other words, discontinuity, right? Um, so that's what it means to be infinite discontinuity. So now we're, we're using infin infinity as our, as our approaching from the left or the right of a value. And this is how it, it might look, uh, some of the graphs might look like. Notice that which of these uh, four properties, or not properties, you know, you know what I mean, four statements applies to this graph. Well, from the left of z of c, so for this one, when I approach c from the left, so when I'm approaching this direction, it approaches what? it approaches positive infinity. When I approach C from the right, so when I'm approaching C from the right, the function is approaching what? To minus infinity. And F of C is equal to some value here. Let's call it m f of c is m so notice that one is approaching positive infinity the other one is negative infinity and f of c is some different value so which of the four uh property or uh, conditions is this one well it looks like the last one right where both infinity so the the limits are different one is approaching one side the other one is approaching the opposite okay now let's try the next example so here, the limit, let's, let's give this guy a, a name, let's call it M. The limit when X approaches C from the left of F of X is equal to what? It's approaching this value. So call it M. The limit when X approaches C from the right of F of X is what? It's approaching infinity, positive infinity. Okay, and then f of c is m also. So which of the four properties or conditions are we talking about for this example? Where is the one that 
from the left is equal to f of c. So if we go up, notice that is the first one, right? So when x approaches c from the left is equal to f of c, but the limit when x approaches from the right is equal to positive infinity, okay? And now another example will be this one. So what's going on when x is approaching c from the left? When x, the limit when x approaches c from the left of f of x is equal to negative infinity, right? Because it's going towards the asymptote in the negative direction. When x is approaching c from the right of f of x, let's call this guy m also. So when I'm approaching from the right, a function is approaching that value m and then f of c is also equal to m so which of the four conditions is that one well it's the second one right the second one tells me that c from the left is going to negative infinity which is not equal to the from the right which is equal to f of c okay now notice that you can combine all of those okay now, I'm going to give a piecewise example, piecewise function example, and we're going to find out what are the four con properties this, uh, this continuity infinite is. So it says, find the, the, the actual instructions in the test will be like, determine if there's a discontinuity or not, uh, if it's essential, determine if it's infinite or removal, uh, I mean jump. Okay? But I gave a specific one that is infinite discontinuity. So the limit when x approaches 1 from the right or from the left, it doesn't matter. Okay. So if we're approaching 1 from the, from the left, we have to use the first one. Okay. Notice that in this example, there's no inequalities, but there is a not equal to. So it says whenever x is not equal to negative 1, oh, it's negative 1, my bad. Negative 1 from the left. There you go. So when x is approaching negative 1, it has to be the, the first, the top one, right? Because it's not equal to negative 1. So we're going to use approach negative 1 from the left of 1 over x plus 1, okay? Now, this one is going to be a little confusing because it's not that obvious what's going to happen, but I'm going to explain as, as much as I can. So, notice that from the left of 1, we're going to have 1 over negative 1 from the left plus 1, okay? Which is what? is 1 over 0 f from the left, okay? It's weird, right? Like, wait, 0 from the left? What does that even mean? Well, if, if, if we are approaching negative 1, then negative 1 plus 1 is approaching 0, right? But we are approaching negative 1 from the left. It means that it's very, very close to negative 1 from the left, but it's not exactly negative 1. So that means that negative 1 plus 1 is very, very, very close to 0, but it's not exactly 0. It's smaller than 0. So everything that's smaller than 0 is what? Is negative. So 1 over 0 from the left is going to be negative infinity. Okay? I hope that made a little sense. So if we're approaching 0 from the left, is a negative number, but 1 over 0 in, in limits, it's described as infinity, right, or undefined. So if we're approaching from the left of 0, it means that it's a negative infinity, okay? Now let's try from the right of negative 1. Again, the same uh, concept. Because x is not equal to negative 1, we use the top one. So the limit 
when x approaches negative 1 from the right of 1 over x plus 1, which is what? Okay, so 1 over negative 1 from the right plus 1 is 1 over 0 from the right, okay? Again, the very same concept. If I'm approaching 0 from the right, that means that I'm approaching from a positive number, okay? So 0 from the right, is a, it's, it's, it's still a positive number, so this 1 over 0 from the right is positive infinity. And then, obviously, g of negative 1 is 0 because that's the condition that it gives us, okay? So this one will be what? It will be the fourth condition, right? When both of the limits are different, one approaches to negative infinity in this case, the other one positive infinity, and at the point is zero. Let's graph this function to see how it look like. Okay, so let me just throw a line here. Oh, wow, that's a straight line. Oh, that's not that straight. Well, it doesn't matter. So at negative one, there's an asymptote, right? Okay, and then at the horizontal asymptote is at zero, and we'll explain that later when we talk about asymptotes. But this one is at zero. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, you know what? Um, I don't know if I should explain the asymptotes now or later. Maybe later. Let's just wait for 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 the topic to come up. Okay, so now we got this. So the limit. So the value, it says the value at negative 1 is 0. Okay? And that's, that's weird. I don't know why they chose 0. Um, but that's the function they, they decided. And then, let me double check. Yeah, it's 0. Okay, so now... From the left of zero, we have negative infinity. So this, it's coming from the left, and then when I approach, I mean from the left of negative one, it's approaching uh, negative infinity. Then from the right of negative one, it's approaching positive infinity. That's how this thing looks like. Okay, now, yes, there is like a, like we're like, why would they give negative one the zero value when there's a vertical asymptote there? I have no idea. Whoever made that example decided to put it there. I would have put it somewhere else, right? Because there's a horizontal asymptote at zero, but that's, that's what they wanted to do. Um, so yeah, that's how the the function is gonna look like given the limits from the left and from the right of negative one. That's all for today. Um, this is the last video of this continuity. I hope you understood. In the next video, I'm gonna give a very unique uh, example of continuity and discontinuity combined. So please like the video, subscribe to Motivao, share it, uh, comment below if there's something that you didn't understand or something that I, I need to explain again, anything you want, okay? So thanks, guys. Have a good day.